At his trial, which ended with him serving a life sentence, the prosecutor said, Charles Harrelson destroyed everyone he came into contact with. He was an unusual type in that he preferred a sniper rifle to the more familiar pistol of his kind. Charles received his first prison sentence for murder in 1968, when, as a result of a police raid, he lost a shipment of heroin belonging to senior mafia partners. To repay the debt, had to take up arms and eliminate one of the participants in a failed drug trafficking operation. True, by this time the family of Charles and Diane Lou Oswald has already broken up, and the three sons of the killer remain to live with his mother, not seeing his father at all. When Woody Harrelson will reach adulthood, Charles, already released by that time for good behavior, will commit a second murder for hire and will go behind bars forever. The case was in May 1979. Then under investigation was a drug kingpin, Jimmy Chagra, who was to be tried by Jonathan Wood, a lawman nicknamed Maximum John. Wood received his high-profile nickname for his habit of giving the harshest sentences to defendants involved in drug trafficking. Therefore, the upcoming trial did not promise criminal authority nothing good. Charles Harrelson received the order and shot the lawman in the parking lot near his house. This was the first murder of a sitting federal judge in U.S. history. Police quickly got on the shooter's trail and arrested Harrelson. In one of his confessions in the case, he said he shot President Kennedy in 1963 in Dallas. Charles later began to deny involvement and no incriminating evidence was found against him. However, conspiracy theorists attribute to him the role of one of the three tramps, suspicious persons found in a freight car near the assassination site, which to date is nothing more than speculation. All this time, Charles's children were unaware of their father's shenanigans, only accidentally heard on the radio program about the ongoing trial concerning the death of a famous fed from the hands of a hired killer, Woody asked his mother if it is not the same Charles Harrelson, which is listed on his birth certificate. His mother admitted that he was indeed his father, but advised him to forget about this shameful relationship and move on with his life. Woody did not listen, and in the early 1980s restored relations with his father, regularly visiting him in prison and even making attempts to review the sentence. The fact that the drug lord Chagra, the order of the murder, was first sentenced to 10 years and then acquitted, thanks to the agreement to cooperate with the investigation and help in the elimination of the Texas drug mafia. Chagra was placed in the witness protection program, and thus the crime had no contract killer left. Lawyers, on which the Hollywood actor spent $2 million, tried to use this criminal paradox as a legal loophole and prove that if there was no customer, then there was no contract killing. Dashing faint failed, the killer remained locked up, where he died of a heart attack on March 15, 2007. When a journalist asked Woody whether his father had a strong influence on him, he replied, Very much so. The fact that Dad and I were born on the same day, it's always been a life symbol for me, a sign of heaven. In Japanese philosophy, there's this idea that if you're born on your father's birthday, then you're not just like him, you are your father. When we used to communicate through the protective glass in prison, I was always amazed at how much we looked alike externally and internally. The only difference is that he spent his seething, violent energy on criminal activity, while I managed to channel my demons into creative endeavors. 